Hi guys! To see how I tint my eyebrows and put on my Lashify eyelash extensions and for a little chit chat, keep watching! Good morning guys! Today I am going to tint my eyebrows and put on my Lashify eyelashes so I decided to turn on the camera for you guys. I'm compiling different videos of how I am letting my natural gray hair grow out again. I will put that video out for you because a lot of you have been asking what's going on with my hair. It keeps getting like brighter and redder. I've been trimming it and it's back to just such a healthy state that I really never want to touch my hair with permanent hair dye again, only semi-permanent hair dye. So I'll show you guys where I'm at at this point. I don't even know how long it's been at this point that I haven't colored my hair, but I've used semi-permanent dye. So it's kind of um, camouflaging my grays. Here they come. They're coming out and you can see they're kind of like a, a pinkish color. They need to be toned again. So I'm just going through like different ideas of how to make this transition as painless as possible. I'll show you some of the things that I've been using before I get started on my brows and my lashes. So I've really been dedicated to this color wow. I had bought this um, years ago and I just didn't feel like it worked, but I wanted to try it again now that I live in Florida and it is so crazy humid here. So after I wash my hair and towel dry, I soak my hair in this and then I blow dry it out. I have two brushes that I use. These are uh, the Conair and this one, I can't read, but I'll link them both below. This one really, um, it's kind of sharp to your scalp, so you don't wanna like dig it into your scalp, but you can see it like really grabs your hair when you're trying to blow dry and gives you that smooth, smooth look when you're blow drying and that's how you activate this to block out the humidity. So if you're looking for an amazing blow dry brush, this is definitely it. And I'm also using this blow dry brush. I'm actually gonna do it right now, but I'm not gonna leave the sound on because it's kind of loud, but I'll show you how it works. So you just up this button to the second to last um, notch and then right before I'm about to take it out, I push it all the way up and it hits cool. So it sets and it makes your hair crazy smooth. So I'm gonna, I'll show you right now, even on my dry hair, you can kind of reset it. just makes your hair so shiny, so smooth. It's not damaging your hair, it's just hot air. So I will use this to kind of touch up my hair the next day. And I also have used this um, Pop and Lock Color Wow. If you wanna do braids, if you're trying to like push your hair down so it's not sticking up, this is so perfect for that. It is kind of thick, so don't go crazy with it. You can put like a tiny bit for the ends. Like I'll show you how tiny I'm talking, like a tiny little dot. And then I'll just pull it through the bottom of my hair. Like if my bangs get a little wonky, which I can't wait till they grow out. <laughs> the top of your hair, you know, sometimes you get those little flyaways and it really makes your hair so smooth. Like I said, if you're doing any kind of braiding, this is perfect for that, for keeping the flyaways at bay. And I got the hairspray, the Color Wow hairspray, which is great for humidity. And I also got this 
um, Wow, Color Wow Shine Spray. So these are all the products that I've been using from Color Wow. And I just wanna see how it's gonna work for my hair. And so far, I'm very happy with these products. If you guys have watched any of my hair videos before, I used to use like a million products. So I'm just trying to use these now and see how it works. So to kind of camouflage the um, start of my gray grow out, I love these thick headbands. They're like really wide and I just put it on, oh, my earring's in the way. I just put it on just behind my bangs like that. And you can leave your bangs out. You can kind of tuck them in like this, which is kind of the look that I like. And it just looks so cute and it kind of takes away from your gray hair growing out or you don't even need gray hair to, to wear these cute things. What I'm gonna do first is tint my eyebrows and I was excited to show you guys like the before and after and what a huge difference this makes to just wake me up and just really amplify your features. This is another thing, like as we get older, I'm almost 54 on November 1st, I will be 54. You lose color and look more drab. And especially now that I've decided to let my natural gray hair grow out, you really have to add that color back in. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to go with this fantasy fun red color. As my gray roots grow out, I'm still going to have this color in my hair. I'm not sure if this is how I'm gonna go through the whole transition, but for now, this is what I decided to do. I feel like when you have like your boxed blonde or your boxed brown or black, and you start to see gray coming through, it's like, oh gosh, this is like traumatizing watching your gray come in. But when I already have like a crazy fantasy color in, I'm like, eh, it's another fantasy color coming in. I feel like the gray silver is already a fantasy color. So it's super easy. It comes with all of these little, little pills and they have powder in them. You just open up the tablet and um, get the powder in like that. And then I just kind of eye it. I take the developer and I kind of just do like a half and half like that. And then it comes with this little tiny brush and I just very carefully mix it together because it kind of like puffs out if you're not careful. Just mix it up and that's it. Now you paint it on your eyebrows. So the longer that you leave it on your eyebrows, the darker they're gonna come out. So I usually leave it for like three minutes. I've left it for like 10 minutes before and who they were black. So. If you guys really want dark eyebrows, go for it. I'm using a dark brown. I buy this on Amazon, I'll link it below for you guys. All I do is brush out my brows and draw it on. Now remember, if you get it on your skin, it's going to stain your skin. So, I like to stain my skin more towards the outer part of my brows because if they'll look much darker, just paint it on. And then in the inner corner, I like to come in a little bit. And it's so nice because it actually picks up the baby hairs. See, I got some underneath where I don't want it to be stained. So I'm gonna wipe it off. And I'm trying to keep my brows like up because my natural brow kind of curves down on the outside. So I'm trying to keep that upwards, catch those little baby hairs up high. And depending on um, what you use to wash your face, um, how often you wash your face, it will last longer, you know, more or less. 
I would say, oh, and I actually forgot to freshly wash my eyebrows, but that's fine. It's still going to work. I would say this lasts about a week and it just starts to naturally fade. So this is a great way to even out your eyebrows. Like this one is higher, so I'm gonna, I'm going to try to like stain this one a different level. They're never perfectly even, but close enough. Just really wakes up your eyes when your brows are darker. And it frames your face. Okay, I'm not sure how long these were on, maybe four-ish minutes. So I'm just taking these little cotton pads and wiping it off. It's only water. So like I said, if you want your skin stained more and you want them darker, just leave it on longer. much darker. You can see it stained my skin a little bit right there. And that's why you're supposed to clean your skin right before you do it. So it'll evenly stain your skin if you want it to. But I'm going to take this other one off and I'll be right back. Well, my mistake will help you. And I usually never wash out the rest of the um, dye out of the cup just for this exact reason. Like, look how good this one came out. It's nice and thick, nice and even, perfect. But this part didn't take. So what I would normally do is take some of the leftover and touch it up and do it again. Now I have to waste a whole new capsule. So I'm gonna touch that up and I'll be back. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how I do this. So you can see where it needs to be touched up. I'm just going to go over it again. I don't know why it's, there's not as much hair there either. Like this is my great brow. I love this brow. And they're definitely both looking a lot better since I'm using the Grande brow. but this one is still never as good as this one. Maybe I'll add a little more. Do them both. So this one really needs to stain the skin to look like this one where the hair naturally goes in. So good lesson that I didn't follow my own advice that I always follow. Don't throw this out until you're done wiping it off so you can just go back and use this again instead of wasting another capsule. Okay, gonna wait a few minutes. Okay, so you can see even the difference of just doing the eyebrows makes a big difference. Like, I feel more woken up Next, I'm going to do my lashes, what I, which I normally do about once a week. I'm taking this Lashify Pre-Cleanser. I'm going to put it on a Q-tip, make sure my lashes are super clean. So I'm going to do the wet side and then the dry side. And I'm going to do this one more time. I also use... Lashify Eyelash Growth Serum. I'm sorry, it's not Lashify. It's Grande Lash and Grande Brow. And I use these every single night. It has made such a difference in my lashes and my brows. So when I'm not wearing my eyelash extensions, my lashes still look really good if I just want to put 
mascara on them. Okay, now they are clean and dry. I have an eyelash curler that I only use on my clean lashes. It does have some glue on it, some of the Lashify glue, but that's not gonna make a difference. And then I give my lashes a curl because the extensions that I use, it's much easier to apply them to curled lashes because the lashes that I like have a curl to them. So instead of trying to fight my straight eyelashes, I put them in a curled position so they go on much easier. Then I'm gonna add the bondage with charcoal flex. This is, they have a lot of different um, choices for glue. And this is my favorite. And you only need to put a little bit. Like when I first started doing this, oh my gosh, I was like globbing it on. And putting on too much can also make them not stick as good. So you want to get it at the base, but not on your skin, just your lashes. So it kind of looks just like a thin coat of mascara. And because I go pretty quick, I do both at the same time. Just, I actually like to go back and forth from eye to eye as I'm going, because sometimes if I'm changing around the lash map, I forget what I put on the other eye. So this whole process takes me about 10 minutes once a week. And it's so worth it for me to not have to deal with mascara. Now I'm going to start off, I change the lash map um, every now and then, but today I'm gonna go with the longest, most dramatic lash map that I like. So I'm starting out with the E16s, and what I do is take the glue and just dab a little bit on the edge, on the inside edge, and I put a tiny bit on the last lash or two because that is where it's going to connect with the next lash right here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Like I said, I like to switch lashes back and forth. I'm gonna do a dip and I'm gonna paint that lash after. Okay, get it in the right angle. Cause I like it more up. There we go, there we go. Now, since I didn't add the glue to the edge, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of glue to the edge of this one. So when I come back, the new lash will kind of stick to that one. Next, I'm doing E15s. So that was a 16, and now I'm going in with a 15. Everyone's lash map is gonna be different. I change it up sometimes, and it's all about your eye shape and the look you're trying to go for. Again, dab that. And then I'm gonna wipe some of it on that lash next to it. So it's going to Kind of lock in with that lash next to it for some extra holding power. I found that makes a big difference so they don't start separating. A little bit of glue. I'm gonna wipe that glue. And it's only a tiny, tiny bit that I'm using. Go right next to it, tap it in. Already, like my face is waking up so much just from the lashes. And these will stay on for a week as long as you don't use oil or a lot of steam in the shower. So I'm going to go with another 15. So we're going to go 16, 15, 15. And when I use 
the 14s, usually I like to start off with a 15. I'll go 15, 14, 14. So just play around with it, figure out like what works best for your eye shape. I don't think I have any more 15s. Well, guess what guys? We're going with 14. I just placed another order and I ran out of 15. So we're going 16, 15, 14, 10. I like to drastically drop in the inner corner. Okay, same thing again. I'm gonna wipe a little bit of the glue on. Line it up. Let that one lash kind of hit the lash next to it to overlap. So this is 16, 15, 14, which will look different on everyone's eyes. And then I'm going to go down to tens, which are much shorter in the inner corner. Oh, so I have been dealing with crazy, crazy back pain lately, you guys. Um, I have a lot of um, chronic pain that I deal with because I was hit by a car when I was a teenager. While I was walking, a drunk driver hit me in the back with his car. So I have two artificial pro discs in my lower spine and one in my neck and I've had a lot of surgeries, so I never know when what is gonna trigger my back and I'm always trying to be really careful. And when I was coloring my hair, I was leaning over that tub right there for like 20 minutes washing my hair out. And my, my back had to kind of be twisted doing that. And I didn't realize how badly that position was gonna blow my back out. So for weeks, I have been suffering just because of that one stupid mistake. I know it's gonna get better, but you know, sometimes just thinking about the fear of ever having to get another surgery or anything like that is just so scary. And I have to work really hard to keep myself positive. And but sometimes like I broke down, I was just like, crying all day the other day and just thinking of all the worst case scenarios and then I'm like I've got to stop I've got to stop and I feel much better today I've got some glue on myself so if you guys deal with any kind of like illness or chronic pain or anything like that you know what a struggle it is to keep your mind positive and you also will know how crucial that is to your healing and to control your pain. And I feel like the day that, you know, a couple days ago when I was just crying and thinking about all the worst case scenario, I, my pain was out of control. And it's all about like keeping your mind positive and just giving your body love no matter what it's doing or not doing at the time. So hang in there, you guys. If you're going through anything um, physically, emotionally, anything like that, hang in there. Just surround yourself with positive people, lots of positive self-talk. Do things like this. Like when I do my brows and my lashes and you know, put on some earrings and get dressed, a little makeup. It honestly just makes me feel better about life. I don't care if I do this and go back to bed. It's just completely changes my whole feel. So try that and see how you feel. Okay, so that is it. All I have done is brows and lashes and I feel like a whole new woman. I feel like I put some effort into myself, even though I will wake up like this for the next week with brows and lashes and amazing. All right, I'm gonna quickly put on my makeup and I'll be back. Aren't you tired of the drama? 
this makeup look so many times before. It's very simple and I'm trying to think of what other videos I have ready to edit. Um, more hair videos I'm going to post about the going gray, a couple more makeup videos. Oh, and how I do my nails. I do my nails at home, gel nails. So I will post this one as well for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Bye.